Okay. Hi, uh, everyone. Um, my name is Michael. So I'll be sharing a short retrospective in photos on the last 10 years of our tech scene. Um, it'll be a lot of photo montage, and in a way, there'll be some embarrassing photos. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> and there you can find a link to our photos uh, to this, deck of, uh, this slide deck over here. You can go to this URL. You want to take a picture. You can follow along. If you, if I, I may move quite fast. If you want to, you can go to this, go to this page, and uh, have a look at, at look at the photos in more detail. You can zoom in and you can find some interesting people inside as well. Um, people in their younger days, <laughs> including myself. Right. <clears throat> Let's go. You got this. Okay. Cool. So, uh, first of all. Uh, let's start with a question. What are the elements of a successful meetup? I'm sure a lot of you have been to meetups in Singapore, right? So what are the different things that would you would find in a, uh, you, you would say associate with a successful meetup, right? As in, you know, soup. Making it happen every month. Making it happen every month. Okay, regularity. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything else? Engaging presentation. Uh, engaging presentation. That's good. Anything else? Free food, yeah, that's important, <laughs> dude, yes. Anything else? Retaining attendees. Retaining attendees, mm, okay, that's important as well, yes. Engaging talks will usually keep them coming, but anyway. Anything else? I, one more suggestion, anywhere? Huh? Save the stream of speakers, okay. Location. Mm, location, correct, venue, right. So these are a few, quite a few things that are quite important. So these are, from my perspective, what are the three important elements of a successful meetup. First of all, it's a venue, a location, a place to actually meet. Uh, food, you know, because we are hungry developers and we like to be fed. Of, of course, usually, and also, unfortunately, sometimes uh, meetups usually happen after, after office hours and you probably don't have time to go for dinner before you go for the meetup, so food is important. And of course, having good speakers, right? Having good speakers uh, will help you keep you engaged and get, keep, coming back for, keep coming back for more. Right, so these are, from my perspective, are the important elements of a, of a successful meetup. So let's talk about the first one. So availability of free space is crucial for holding events, especially on a small island where you know, uh, effective, we have quite effective public transport, so we can, you can get anywhere quite easily for after, after work, right? So having a good meetup venue is more important. So, um, so venue somehow is the easiest problem to solve of the three things I talked about in Singapore. For some reason, so I'll, I'll, I'll hop back to the time where I first started the PHP user group in Singapore. How many PHP developers do we have in the room? Two, three, no, anyway, back in the day, 2007, it was still quite popular. It's still quite, it is still quite popular, but you know, just not, not in this room. <laughs> <laughs> so when I first, first started the PHP user group in 2007, I created the first event on Facebook as a placeholder because I didn't have any address, uh, or rather I have no venue uh, yet, or I, and I have no speakers. So essentially, I kind of like put it there just to gauge interest, see what's the you know, RSVP numbers like. And suddenly, the, the numbers balloon to 60 to 80 people, like, whoa, shit. I have a good problem now. I need a place to actually house potentially 60 to 80 people. So how do I do this? So I reached out to my other user group leaders. You know, at the time, there was this user group called Ruby Brigade. Ruby Brigade, you know, it's kind of like, you know, iOS Dev Scout was a bit kind of like based on that. Ruby Brigade was the name of the Singapore Ruby user group before I changed the name. So yeah, anyway, uh, so Ruby Brigade, I talked to them and said, hey, could you, you, you guys hold meetups at SMU, Do you, can you like hook me up with somebody there who could get me a room? Uh, and then he basically hooked me up with a, one of the student, student associations there. It's called, listen to this, it's Object Oriented Programming Society in SMU. <laughs> there, I kid you not, there is such a group. And we're very thankful for them because they gave us a space and they graciously hosted us. And this is where we had our first meetup, right? So yay, problem solved. So yeah, the first uh, source of free venue, right? Free venue is uh, education institutes like SMU. It has been very uh, helpful to letting us use the space. Another, uh, another example of a helpful uh, education institution that has been helping us is Singapore Poly. That's Abru over there in the red shirt. He gave a talk about, what was it, about IoT or something? Or was it some, do you remember? Wrestler, right, one of the frameworks that he wrote in PHP. Pretty good, good stuff. Anyway, uh, right, so yeah, uh, education institutions are very helpful. Even right now, we're here in S uh, NUS, right? So we are kind of uh, blessed by, by the availability of such venues. Um, the other source of, of free space are companies. Companies with large conference rooms and meeting areas are kind of very uh, helpful. And they want to reach out to the community because 
they're hiring people for one. Um, and the other thing is they want to reach out to people, let them know about their, their awesome products, right? So Microsoft has been a very early, in the early, very early days, very from very from very from day one when I was started doing meetups, um, they have been really 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 supportive to the community. It's a very big contrast from what I hear uh, on the internet about uh, Microsoft being like a, you know, uh, uh, monopolist and all that stuff. But they're not really that big of a tyrant here in Singapore, right? They are very good and very open. They are very open to the community and they really want to reach out to the community, which is pretty awesome. And these are some photos of their old venue. So this is uh, back in, in, in NTUC Centre, right? Uh, one Marina Boulevard. And this is before it was renovated. It has one huge room. Pretty awesome. Uh, this is one of the other rooms that they have. So free space like this could house about 100 over people. In this smaller room, we can house about 50 people, so which is great. Right, another picture of how big the room is. So this is on the 22nd floor, right, Terence? Right, yeah, so yeah. So that's one, uh, one company which is very helpful from the very early days. Another company that was also open to us was Yahoo in the early days as well, and they, they were able to open their space to us. Another one is Oracle, uh, ironically, but yeah, they are, they are quite interested. They're quite open to, to uh, hosting meetups there. Um, PayPal, I, I'm sure a lot of you have been to meetups at PayPal, right? So this is their, their, their old space where they, had, uh, where they had this. This is actually, I think, tech ladies, a tech ladies meetup, if I'm not wrong. And you can see uh, Stephanie's there in the middle, right? Um, and Shel is it Shelton there? No, not Shelton. Okay, never mind. Anyway, yeah, so, um, right, so PayPal. Uh, another, another place that I'm sure you guys have been to uh, is Amazon Web Services, uh, AWS. They have really nice space to, to, to host uh, meetups. So a lot of companies are really with big open areas and, and where they host their company all hands and all that stuff, and they also open that to let uh, meetup organizers like me uh, host our meetup there, which is pretty great, uh, great blessing to all the meetup uh, organizers here who are kind of like not, don't have a lot of money to pay for venues. <laughs> so yeah. Um, right, so another group of, of uh, another source of free venues is like, uh, are co-working spaces. You find a lot of co-working spaces are being op opening up nowadays, like WeWork, Impact Hub, and now it's called Foundate, and a few others, which are, have opened up their space uh, to, to meetups as well. But the OG, the original place where of co-working spaces where meetups has been happening is Hackerspace. Have you guys been there? Yeah. Yeah, back in, this is when it was 2000, we started in 2009, 2009, so, we, so it's kind of like a first clubhouse for geeks where we kind of like, um, we want, want to have a space to hang out and not lose our bags at a coffee shop or something. So this is where we go to kind of like meet up, hang, hang, hang out, and um, this is how it looks like. The original hackerspace was at Buzora Street, uh, before it was gentrified and before it was cool, right? So now, so is how it looks like before. It was on the second floor. Of, uh, of, of your shop house. Ironic, there's also, on the, on, you see on the left, the photo there, there's actually a, a mural, or rather a, a mural on the, on the door, which is a sliding door that opens to a library. And this sliding door, because the, the space used to be uh, a media, uh, advertising company, right? Or something, it was called Liquid Media or something like that. And this is the yeah, kind of motifs and everything. Um, interesting, so we kept that and it was kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, free, free space to host meetups, small workshops, and sometimes even non-tech events are also held there like this guitar meetup. I think right now, nowadays, uh, Luther still hosts a ukulele meetup that meets there every month. Uh, right, where's, where's Luther? Is Luther in here? Never mind. Uh, okay, right, so, uh, 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 co-working spaces are pretty awesome. So the three places I talk about, uh, education institutions, companies, as well as co-working spaces, are pretty open to having uh, meetups help there. But I also want to give a quick recognition and shout out to uh, developer relations folks, because none of this would be possible without our developer relations friends in, in those companies, like Microsoft and PayPal, who have helped build the case for hosting meetup, uh, meetup groups in their premises. And sometimes it's a very tagless job, right? Because they, the, the, meetup, uh, the developer relations people will have to stay a bit later to kind of open, make sure that we're there. And sometimes they stay all the way to the end to make sure that they, 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 they will clean up and, and uh, make sure everything's uh, properly set up, uh, arranged back to its original place. Um, yeah, so it's a really tagless job. And just a call, uh, one quick call, I want to call out uh, those who have, been helped us, who have helped us in the past. Uh, this, some, some of the faces here you may not know or may not know of. Um, but I, I, I'm really thankful for them to, for reaching out to us. Chris Ishmael is a devel de uh, developer relations uh, person at Microsoft. He was the first uh, the DPE uh, staff that I met uh, when I was starting my own first meetup. He actually spoke at a Facebook developer garage, uh, uh, which is like a uh, Facebook developer uh, uh, conference meetup thing that happened in Singapore uh, back then. 
And I met him there. He gave he gave a talk about how how you could use uh, some Microsoft products uh, with uh, with uh, Facebook uh, APIs. And basically, he reached out to me and say we could, they could basically host us at Microsoft uh, for our meetups. Uh, so our PhD meetup was benefited a lot from him. Uh, he's no, he's no longer in Singapore. I think he's moved to the U.S. Right, he has a job there right now. Henry Lim used to work in Yahoo. So right now he works at WeGo, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Blair Layton used to uh, run developer developer relations at Oracle. Uh, I think he left and joined AWS, and I think he's running his own startup right now. Uh, someone else who some some, some of us may, may may know Ming Fei, uh, who who is also also a DPE uh, staff at uh, Microsoft, who also was very helpful in letting us uh, uh, opening up the space to us. I'm I'm forever in debt to Ming Hao, uh, Ming, who has been who has basically a, a championed uh, a PHP. Uh, conference uh, back in 2015, 2016, when we needed funds for to run the, run the conference, they basically uh, championed uh, and got us some funding in, internally to run the conference. Uh, unfortunately, he has passed away from cancer, but we are all forever grateful to being for for doing uh, what he's what he's done. Someone else who we may all know, Lawrence Putra, when he was running uh, evangel uh, the evangelist arm at uh, PayPal, yeah, he's, he helped us. He's granted us access to a lot of the spaces and meet up. Uh, Areas and Nunjing, of course. Um, who can forget Nunjing? Um, we all know Nunjing, right? Okay, never mind. Anyway, he's a pretty awesome guy. Anyway, uh, right. So and there are so many more. Uh, I think there's also some some of, some of them in our midst today. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know if Sarah around. Terence is here, right? So, yeah. So these are people who has been very helpful and in, in, in help, and ch helping to champion our cause in the enterprises. And I think we had also help with the Vicky and, and a few others. Okay. Anyway, so. I tend to mumble, I'm sorry. Am I going too fast? Am I, is this too, am I going too fast? Is it okay? All right, cool. All right. Well, I have a lot of slides, so unfortunately, I can't go really fast. Anyway, um, so we talked about venue, and then the next thing, went that, the, the next element to the, the, the least of successful meetup is food, right? So, um, you know, in the past, uh, I learned a lot from my past experience as a grassroots leader. Back, back in 2001 and 2000, 2001, 2004, I was a grassroots leader at our Genic Kambangan Youth Executive Committee. So essentially, I learned about some tricks to learn to how to incentivize people to stay all the way to the end of a grassroots event. For, uh, the, number one is food. You have given them food, you stay at least to the midway point. And the second thing, you give them lucky draw prizes, and you'll stay all the way to the end. So I've actually picked, tried to use those two techniques in, in, in my first few meetups. Uh, I, I provided food from, from, the, from the first few from, from, from the first PhD meetup I ever organized, uh, and uh, of course, and I tried to give lucky draw prizes. But after a while, I got I, I was like burning a hole in my pocket, and a lot of sponsors were not willing to give prizes. Like, but I think there's still people who who, who feel that is a good tactic. Uh, <laughs> And I think it still works. Anyway, this is some an example of the food that was provided. You know, we have some. Sometimes we have, uh, uh, you know, finger food. Uh, we have like full fledged buffets. But by default, most or most meetups will use pizzas, right? So like Microsoft, Yahoo, PayPal, Oracle, AWS, Stripe. These are companies that has hosted us. At the same time, they also provide us with with uh, free food. Of course, SP Digital as well, right? So um, yeah, these are some of the. Uh, uh, easy to use, like, like you know, for the cost per uh, uh, per square inch, you know, like uh, energy packed and stuff like that. Yeah, it's uh, easy to use, easy to handle, and yeah, this is actually a photo from Valentine, by the way. So anyway, yeah. So right, um, of course, you know, you see there are happy devs, happy developers who love happy food. I'm not sure what was Chinmay thinking, but yes, happy food. Uh, and almost, most recently, it's still happening today, we're providing pizzas, and sometimes we'll try to deviate and try a bit different, you know, like sometimes we provide sushi. Again, very expensive, but anyway. Yep, um, right, so we talk about venue, we talk about food, and uh, next thing is about uh, speakers, right. Um, from, even from the very first meetup uh, that I organized in 2007, I had three speakers. It was a very deliberate choice in, in selecting these three speakers, and each of, each of them appealed to a particular category of target audience that I was looking for. Was Raymond is on the left, Yuzin is in the middle, and, and um, I gave the one talk at the very beginning. So the three groups that we, we reach out to in, in, uh, in our meetups are newbies, people who are new to the programming language, right? So we try to uh, provide talks, uh, topics that will appeal to them. So I gave a talk about PHP 101, uh, which would then basically uh, target new learners, fresh graduates, or uh, people who are learning PHP for the first time. 
Second thing, we want to reach out to our, our professionals because professionals come for these meetups just to learn, to learn and uh, people who are working in tech jobs who want to pick up new knowledge, help them in their day job as well as you know, with their side projects and whatnot. Right? So professionals. So we got using to talk about security in PHP. So we just, I hope, appeal to the professionals in, in uh, professionals group. And Raymond was a bit of a... Interesting choice. Well, I wanted someone to can talk to the old, to the business folks. Basically, reach out to the business folks and say, "Hey, this is uh, PHP is good for your business and stuff like that." So he gave a talk about open source and how you, open source can leverage on on, on uh, companies can uh, can leverage on open source technologies and so on and so forth. But business people are primarily there who co who come for meetups are primarily primarily there to attract and hire tech people. They're basically there to basically hire hire tech people like, um, to reach out and to basically to give a pitch about how awesome it is to work for their company and, of, and hopefully you can get to work for them. But it turns out I don't really need to cater to the business folks because you know, as long as you give them ample time to do networking and to access to pitch to developers, they're fine. Right? They can take care of their own. Of their own. So essentially from there, from there onwards, I just catered to just the professionals as well as newbies in the meetups uh, that we run. As for the business folks, we, as long as we have food, they will gather and kind of like mingle and chit chat with people like yourself and hope to uh, win your hearts and minds and soul to their business. Anyway, so uh, right, so that's uh, so we have many speakers in Singapore. We find that there are a lot of uh, Singapore-based developers, uh, like Chin Yong on the left. He now runs the engineering team at where's where's Nugget. Yes, Nugget. Yeah, and previously he was at Vicky. And, uh, and then on the right, you have a young version of Lester Chan, who is, who is uh, one of the well, most well-known uh, WordPress plugin developers in Singapore. He doesn't look like that anymore. He looks much younger, uh, much uh, skinnier now. Anyway, another one. Uh, the, the, uh, I can't remember the guy on the left. The other guy on the right, you should know him. Uh, Adrian. This is Adrian Quack, and this is Chun Kit. Anyway, so there's uh, some awesome developers I met. Uh, they were doing PHP, and then uh, for one of the PHP meetups, I actually wanted to give the PHP developers a bit more different perspective of how other languages work. So I got Chun Kit to give a talk about how Ruby functions, how to do Rails, and then at a PHP meetup. So it was interesting. Anyway, um, right, um, we also had a number of women speakers, you know, so this is, uh, um, right, and you probably know these ladies here. Uh, Hui Jing will probably kill me for showing this photo, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, well, of course, we have developer relations people who, are there to, to, who could uh, talk about their products and so on and so forth. It was quite interesting because Chris Ishmael, when he did this uh, uh, meet, uh, talk at, our, at our, our second PHP user group, he get basically on the spot set up a, uh, a Windows Server 2000, basically. He was, headless. he was running a headless Windows Server 2000, and basically it was, run, it was running a script that could automatically install a WordPress instance on it. All live demo, right? Just to show how you could use Microsoft products to do this, which is, for me was, a, was quite interesting, as in, you know, um, a company like Microsoft would, would support open source and be able to, I mean, back this, remember this back in 2000-ish, so it was kind of an interesting uh, thing for us, for me at least. Um, right. Uh, we also have uh, developer, developer relations people who fly in from overseas. So this is, is Rama, who is from Indonesia. He, you, he represents uh, Zen, which is a Zen framework, you know, Zen framework, PHP Zen framework. He represents Zen in this part of the world and he basically flew in to give a couple of talks as well. Uh, of course, we also have students. Um, these, are some of the stu uh, these are some of the students who actually spoke at, so at the meetups in Singapore. You may recognize the guy in the middle is Peter Kim. He, he, do you know him? No? Never mind. Uh, right, and we we'll sometimes also have panel discussions. So these are a, a variety of, con of content that people can bring um, with different formats. Sometimes we also reward our speakers. We give them, um, uh, Zion coined this PHP, uh, presenters have presence. <laughs> so we give them a nice uh, plushie. Sometimes, uh, also in other meetups like the iOS, iOS Dev Scout, you, yeah. I think they, Isaac pre 3D printed a little memento, right? Which is kind of an interesting touch, right? So sometimes we get rewarded for just speaking at, at, at meetups. And of course, we have sometimes we get, we get visiting speakers. This is Matt Manowak. He is the founder of Automatic, uh, basically a company that, that created WordPress. Uh, he was in Singapore that uh, sometime, some years ago. Uh, this is the creator of PHP. Uh, Rasmus Ladoff, and some of you may know this guy, Mats, right? So he, so we do get a lot, fair bit of visiting speakers. Mats is the creator of Ruby, of the Ruby language. 
So we have talked about Singapore-based developers and we, 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 we cater to two different groups, which are the um, newbies as well as professionals. I also want to talk about another group of speakers that we get in our local meetups, right? So can you recognize the next few speakers that are in this slide, in the, in the slides, right? So if you do, your meetup experience was awesome. Basically because I want to talk, I want to highlight the foreign talent that has been uh, visiting our shores and some of them has chosen to stay here and work here. And I think them, them coming to Singapore brought with them a lot of the diversity as well as uh, awesome ideas or, or like um, different ideas that could basically uh, has enriched our whole community as a whole. When I first started uh, our first uh, meetup groups, uh, before, before 2007, we had uh, it was just a few local people, but they're not very into uh, you know, tech. But as, as we, time went on, I see a lot of more foreigners coming to our local tech communities, and they basically brought a lot of uh, interesting content. And even some of them even started meetup groups in Singapore. I'll show you a few of them. Uh, here's Carl Cora Martin. He came to Singapore because he was building a bird watching app, right? But because, yeah, he, was re he, was, he wrote an iOS bird, bird, uh, app uh, for bird watchers. And he came to Singapore to kind of like build an app here. And he, he stayed on and basically founded uh, uh, and, and was, became an office manager for Pivotal Labs in Singapore. Um, Andy Crow on the right, he basically started a Ruby, uh, what, what, Ruby user group in Singapore as well as a Ruby conference. Red Dot Ruby conference was started by him, I believe. Winston can correct me on that. Is he here? No. Anyway, right. Uh, I can't really pronounce his name, Greg, Gregosh. Uh, yeah, he was also quite a fixture in the Ruby community. Chris Linnett, he, he basically co founded the CSS Meetup group. Uh, Steve, Stephen, Stephen. What's his name? Stephen, Steve? Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. he used to represent Braintree in, in, in Singapore and, uh, shit, I forgot his name. York, yes, York. Uh, he, now he runs, he's, he's in some, anyway. Yeah, uh, Rick, uh, Ted, is, he, is Ted still here? No? Okay, never mind. Uh, Tim Oxley, he, he basically founded a, a JavaScript, a Singapore JavaScript meetup group. This is him when he still had hair, longer hair. <laughs> He's going to kill me for showing this photo. Uh, and then, then we have uh, Thomas, Thomas Gorison, who, who basically started the JSConf in uh, JSConf Asia in Singapore. And who else do we have? Martin. Uh, and here is a younger version of Kit and, and Bjorn Anderson, who are both Swedish. And Martin is German, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. So uh, Martin runs the Python user group as well as PyCon, uh, PyCon Singapore. He was organizer of PyCon Singapore this year. Um, Bjorn and Kit used to work in a company called Media Pop. Yeah, so, um, and they're big Rubyists, so they basically talk about a lot of Ruby stuff. Michael? Is that how he's pronouncing it? Mike? Claudio. Claudio, his second name is Michael, sorry. Claudio and uh, Sebastian Deckers, who are both quite regular fixtures in our local meetups. Sebastian used to speak a lot in, in JavaScript meetups. He was brought back to Singapore by Thomas when he, Thomas was, uh, Thomas Gorison, who is this guy on the left, he was, he was, he was basically building uh, the front end for uh, Red, uh, Red Mart. And basically he needed uh, web developers who could help him work on that. And basically he contacted Sebastian and, and Raman, who uh, runs Crypto Jobs List. Both of them, so basically, uh, uh, basically flew them back to Singapore to work on the Red Mart front end, which is kind of interesting. So yeah. And uh, he would, yeah, so they both of them speak at various meetups as well. Um, uh, South Africans, you know, we have two of them here. Yeah. This is a younger version of Kai Henry. He was here earlier on. He is beard. He still wears the same check shirt. So, yeah. Yeah. And of course, 7 February. Um, yeah. He used to work at PayPal. Now he works in Go Bear. Yes, Go Bear. Correct. Uh, I believe Kai just joined Gojek. So, yeah. Anyway, Roland Turner, and we have uh, Vincent DeSmith, uh, who he is a regular fixture in the Docker meetup as well as Kubernetes meetup. Roland, he's a, he's a regular fixture in the Hack, Hackware meetup as well. He is one of, one of the few qualified um, ham radio operators in Singapore, right? So, interesting. Anyway, and a few others here. Um, yeah, so these are my ex-colleagues in, in, in New Innovation, which is a consultancy I used to work at. So pretty awesome peoples. We have Wei, 
uh, Gabe and Divya. So, yes. As you can see, as I get on with age, my remembrance of names is actually not as good as before. So, right. Right, so that's uh, all the foreign talents which, are, which have been uh, in Singapore and they provide a lot of uh, interesting content which actually help enrich all our meetup groups. Uh. So I uh, want to give uh, recognition for these people as well. But wait, there's one, one thing that we forgot. There's one group of people that, or one, one important element uh, that we have forgotten. There's a fourth element in, in, in determining a successful meetup. I think which some of you has, talked to, uh, uh, has mentioned just now, is the audience having you all attend the meetup is actually very important as well. So in the early days, when, we first, uh, when I first started my, uh, the meetup groups, um, somehow or other, we have more bloggers. But in the early days, the main bulk of meetup attendees were bloggers themselves. And uh, these are some of the bloggers that came for, my, for one of my first few meetups. And it was very interesting because it helped create awareness for the meetup because they were live blogging. <laughs> they were live blogging during the meetup, which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah, you may not recognize them, Oh, well, you may not know them. It's fine, but they are good. For, they are really so. You get, let's just let you know that the, they were the early adopters. Basically, they were, it was a relatively young, relatively young community exploring this thing called new media. Right? We, it was back then. It was called new media, and basically, um, they were techno technologically mobile. They were able to learn things very quickly, and they came for meetups because they really want to learn about these new things that we are we, we, we're, we're talking about. They were also podcasters back in the day. So there was this uh, bunch of podcasters, and they formed this. They started this thing called Tech Sixty Five. So Tech Sixty Five is a is a series. They have a series of a few blogs, uh, blogs as well as podcasts. Uh, back in the early days, this is two thousand seven, two thousand six. Yeah. So they, they, yeah, you can see Chin Mei's over here, um, and Farinelli, Jarek, and Danny Daniel Zhou. So basically, you can still find them on on YouTube. I believe there are quite a number of their podcast on YouTube, so you can watch, you can watch that and have a look at it, it's quite interesting. Um, so we also have uh, a lot, of, as I said, we have students, because we also have student, uh, student uh, members as well who come for, come for meetups. Uh, of interest to us, there are also student groups at the time who are also uh, actively participating in meetups as well as organizing meetups. There was this group back in 2007, it's, uh, it's a group called the Digital, Mov Digital Movement. And it actually create, it started a tech conference called Nexus. And this is uh, some of the co-organizers in there. You may recognize CJ somewhere in the, in the top right-hand corner. And yeah. And they actually got quite big. Uh, the conference was actually quite big. They actually got down a former chief scientist from Amazon to basically give a talk as, uh, there as well. Um, which is kind of interesting. If you Google it, you can probably find it. Uh, the Digital Movement, Nexus 2007, you can find a couple of links as well. There's another student group called E27. They originally, it was called Entrepreneur 27. I think they rebranded just E27. Uh, so they actually started this thing called an unconference. An unconference is... I guess you guys know what an unconference is, right? Right, so they did one thing called Unconference 2007, um, and basically they have a lot of tech uh, speakers as well, people who are interesting. Uh, with Bernard Leung over there and James Singh. Um, Bernard Leung used to run SPH uh, no, uh, SingPost Sing Digital, and now he is somewhere else, I can't remember where. Anyway, um, James Singh is quite interesting fellow. And you can find me somewhere in the middle over there. That's me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have much hair back then either. <laughs> this is 2007. Uh, right, and they also did it again in 2008, uh, another conference, uh, using Rizwan and uh, Ka. Ka yeah. Anyway, um, oh yes, and, uh, and I, at the time I was also running, I was, I was actually doing a podcast network, uh, it was called Podfire, so I was there to promote uh, as a startup, <laughs> over there trying to promote, the, promote that uh, podcasting network, so it's interesting. So yeah, it was a tech conference of sorts where people come and talk about tech stuff and, and startup stuff, but there's something that these two uh, student groups have in common. Both of these uh, student groups emerged around the 2007, 2008 period, and both have some, really something very interesting in common. Both of them were founded by members who had, uh, who had been on this program called the NOC program, NUS Overseas College. So in this program, they basically send students overseas to be exposed to the tech uh, and startup community in different parts of the world, like San Francisco, uh, Israel, um, uh, so in Philadelphia, 
Beijing, Shanghai, and a few other places. So they go, they basically they send the students there on an exchange program. They work on a, at a local tech company and come back to Singapore, and they bring a lot of their, uh, they, they basically absorb a lot of the uh, startup culture and and the, and the and the desire to that the knowledge that you can change the world with, a uh, few few individuals can change the world with uh, by just solving a real world problem. So basically came back and brought a lot of their ideas and they basically started use student groups that basically formed many many companies in Singapore, like Honest Bee, Carousel, Nainai Co. These are all uh, founded by alumni of the of this student group called uh, NOC. In fact, I used to work in a startup where the founder is an alumni of NOC. So on the left you see, this found, so the startup is called Found and the guy's name is called Danny, Danny Tan, right? And this is us working in San Francisco um, you know, working on the iOS and Android app. Um, Danny has, uh, although this startup didn't do so well, but Danny went on to, st to start other start other other startups. And currently, he runs Hip Van. You guys know of Hip Hip Van? No, never mind. Anyway, right? Um, yeah. So it was also listed in Vulcan Post uh, this year, this post back in 2017 about ten Singapore startups who pioneered the entrepreneurial scene in, in the early days. Uh, so yeah, Found was the company was also listed there as well. Why did I talk about startups and student groups and all that stuff? Basically, builders like us need a worthy problem to work on, and startups bring real-world problems for us to solve. Right? So basically, we want to solve a real-world problem, and startups are a good place to go to for, to, for solving real-world problems. Um, right, so this is a, like a cause and effect kind of chart. So government funding, did, uh, such as uh, Sing Spring Singapore's numerous grants, uh, National Research Foundation, uh, IGEM back uh, VCs basically basically provided the funds that could fund startups. And when startups are created, they enable us to, uh, and the funds enable startups to thrive and hire tech talents. And therefore, us as developers can work as startups, and they can, we can help them to solve uh, and build something that's great. And that's me in 2011, working on the Found app, sitting on, the, on a borrowed cubicle in Pivotal Labs in San Francisco. Without this startup, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to learn all the good engineering practices, uh, as well as travel to the US and experience Silicon, Silicon Valley for myself. Right? This is back in 20, 2011. I wouldn't have that experience had it not been for a student group that created startups, that created jobs for me to go and learn things. So yeah, we're all very thankful for, I'm very thankful for them. Um, right. Oh, so what about selfies? I like taking selfies, you know that? Um, and <laughs> the first time I took a selfie was back in 2013 um, because I felt I, I was like, scrolling through some of my old photo albums in Facebook and I couldn't find it, a lot of photos of myself uh, or, or me and my friends, uh, which I felt was important. I like to take photos. I want to I wanna have photos that I can remember my friends by and having photo, selfies was one of the ways that I could do it. So in 2013, at Geek Camp, uh, a geek camp to, uh, in 2013 was the first time I took. I actually took selfies. Conscious, it was a conscious effort. Something, to, something just turned on, right? Uh, yeah. So, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of people come for meetups and everything. Um, and an audience group of, of audiences are also meeting outside of meetups. So, not the meetup, the monthly meetups wasn't just the only place that we could gather and do stuff. We always had hackathons, right? Remember this soup. We did this in 2012, a uh, iOS Dev Scout hackathon, which is kind of interesting. And we also like social gathering. In com uh, uh, social gatherings are very common. We hang out at, co at coffee places like this, right? And social gatherings like this. You know, Hackerspace every year had a, uh, had a, have a Christmas party. This is one of the Christmas parties that we had uh, where we could try some of Bing's meat. <laughs> Basically, Ming here, one of the founders of our co-founders of Hackerspace, like to grill some nice uh, meats over there, like beef and beef skillets and stuff. So yeah, he would serve them at his, at his, at his social gatherings, which is kind of interesting. He act as a, a fundraising effort for Hackerspace. Social gatherings, again, are super common. So this is actually, I did this as part of PHP for a PHP uh, user group. So I wanted a social, not non non monthly tech gather, gathering to kind of meet people. I felt we were quite fragmented. I couldn't, I didn't know a lot of people in the meetup groups. Uh, so I wanted some social gathering to kind of meet them, and it kind of somehow inspired uh, Chion to start CopyJS. So that's what he says. Yeah, and this is the social, uh, the granddaddy of social gatherings in Singapore. This is Geek Brunch. You know, uh, have you guys been to Geek Brunch? No, yes. It's a, it's a half yearly thing. So it's the first Geek Brunch in 2012, 
2013, I can't remember, some time ago. And this is the most recent one we had in August, right? So this is how big the, the group has gone. So you should come for this, go check out geekbranch.sg. Uh, they, so groups also start to specialize. It's not just like uh, programming groups that work uh, that does PHP or or uh, Python or, or or GoLang, but it's also groups that cut across different uh, types of programming languages and tech stacks. So SG Geek Girls was one of the first that started for, that was targeted at women, and there was also Rails Girls Singapore, right? So there's still there are, right now there are many tech and uh, tech uh, women. Uh, tech groups in Singapore as well. There's, uh, there's uh, tech ladies, there's coding girls, and there's many others. Yeah, and this is some of the, from the meetups and the social gatherings, we also graduated into organizing conferences. So you've probably been to a couple of these conferences here in Singapore. IOS, IOS, there's the iOS Conf is happening in January, so you should go for that. Super Silly Hackathon is happening in when? Uh? December. December, right, so yeah. Uh, and. JS Camp Asia was the, was the original name of JS Conf because Thomas couldn't get the uh, the, the, uh, the the rights to use JS Conf uh, in uh, back then, so he used this JS Camp as a way of experimenting with and figuring out how to actually do this. Um, and that from there, he he got uh, he got quite successful with JS Camp, and therefore he did uh, JS Conf. He was able to do JS Conf Asia. At the same time, they were also, uh, so over the years, we've seen a lot of new uh, people coming into the, in the tech industry. We have, uh, we have locals, we have students, we also have uh, foreign talent coming here. At the same time, we also have a new group of people that was, was, was come, coming into the market as well, into the audience market. Um, basically, these are people who are boot camp graduates. So you see a lot of boot camp graduates. Uh, basically, I think our, our government was pushing for a lot of uh, tech jobs, trying to create more tech jobs in the industry. So they create, they basically uh, uh, co-paid uh, uh, boot camps to basically like you know Singaporeans who go for this boot camp get a deep discount and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, boot camp. Uh, this is uh, I believe this uh, from the first batch of uh, graduates from uh, General Assembly. Yes, General Assembly. Sebastian Deckers was your was your was the lecturer. And there's people that you may see, you may know there. Uh, this is the most recent one uh, from uh, TalkWorks. TalkWorks had a program, similar program called TalkWorks Jumpstart. So this is uh, some, of the, some of the graduates from this year, right? I think it was uh, from two months ago, I believe. Yeah. And yeah, because of this, there are a lot of new people coming to the industry who are junior developers. So I also started this user group called Junior Dev Singapore. So we just started uh, last year in in February. And basically, uh, it was a Singapore. It's basically the Singapore chapter of JudaDev.io, which is which just started in, in Melbourne. So I brought that in Singapore because I felt we also needed a support group for for junior developers in our community. So I started this. It has it has not gone beyond just a. Uh, we do a social and a, and a code and tell every month. We also do a thing called developers gym, where developers come every two weeks and do coding coding workshops or coding dojos together. And recently, we also started a mentoring program, so to such as so, so as to reach out to uh, to pair up junior developers with senior developers and get, get mentoring program uh, to get a mentoring uh, happening. So yeah, this is some of the groups that we have uh, uh, reach out to. So again, what are the elements of a successful meetup? You have seen them: the venue, the food, the speakers, and of course, the audience. You. And then all this come together to form uh, uh, great uh, meetups, and I hope you all have got experience uh, going for meetups yourself, and I hope you all have learned a lot from all this. Um, yeah, so my mission isn't quite done. I still want to share with more people about the software engineering as a career, because that's something I'm passionate about. So I started this thing called Engineers.sg as a way of creating, uh, curating videos of tech, of tech events in Singapore, including today's uh, Geek Camp. With Sayani and Chiang, we also created this thing called the Geek Path, where we curated uh, like a, from a bunch of developers in Singapore, like what they believe to be uh, what it means to be a geek, right? So you should check this out. It's pretty nice. There's even a poster you can download and put it on on your on your desktop. The Geek Path. Geek path. So getting more involved in the community, there are many ways to get more involved in the community. Visit this website, engineers.sg, there's lots of videos there. Go for meetups, you can go to engineers.sg slash events, you can find all sorts of meetups that are organized there. Uh, there are also places where you can meet people in the community, like JunoDev, KopiJS, and Geek Brunch. And there are many other places where you can go and have a chat with people. 
So that's about 10 years worth of photos you have seen. I didn't put a timestamp on them, but trust me, those are from 10 years, uh, more than 10 years ago. And it's today. We have new memories every day, and we will bring our new memories to future meetups as well. And I believe, I like taking photos, and it's a way of helping us, me, remember the, the friends I have in the community and the, the, the friendships that has been so, so important to, to me uh, over the years. Um, you don't, still don't know who I am, my name is Michael Chang. You can find me on Kota, on, at Kota Kung Fu on Twitter and Instagram. And if you're interested, this is a timeline about me, like what I've done, uh, what I've accomplished in the last 10 plus years. Yeah. As you can see, I don't have a degree in computer science, so this is just me. Um, yeah. And if, if you cannot remember anything, if there's only one thing you must remember, you can only remember during today, uh, join our Dev Chat group. We have a Dev, Sing Dev Singapore Telegram group. With all the developers in Singapore. That's what makes this the most awesome and biggest uh, chat group in, uh, of in Singapore. Yeah. So that's all I have. Thank you.